All right, EM Hotep family, today is going to be a little bit fun in the sense that we're going to try something out. We're going to see whether a black nationalist can read Neely Fuller Jr. and keep a straight face. I was trying to put this on uh, Discord at the same time, but it turns out my computer is not capable of handling that kind of uh, RAM. So these are the books. These are this is this is this is one of the, this is the book we're going to read. All right, this is the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. You can kind of see it's kind of new. I mean, not too new. I was I was trying to read it, then I got like this far, and I was like, nope, <laughs> nope. Uh, I actually got another book from the brother. So you know, it's, it's very important that even though you may not like a book, is this the same book? No, 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 no. See, this is the a compensatory counter racist code. And this right here is the a compensatory counter racist codified word guide. So you know, even if you don't like somebody, you know, uh, you know, support them. You know what I mean? Like, like it don't even it doesn't even matter. It's just like money is not, you know, like money is not that. Like it's not something that you just say, you know what? I'm not gonna support this dude or nothing like that. So uh, here we go. I'm gonna get kick right into it. We're gonna go into this United. You know, uh, a compensatory counter racist code. This was redone from 2016, but oh, hold on a second, I got this thing over. Uh, yeah, all right. So what 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 it's going to be is this. Uh, this is actually an older book. This is a book from uh, I want to say the seven. Oh, 1957. The original was from 1957. This was a book that, the reason why you would read this book is because it inspired Francis Cress Wellesing, and you already know that she's she's just, you know, amazing kind of, you know, so, I mean, like, she's amazing, so, because of that, you know, you want to check it out, so let's see if we can, you think I should go to chapter, chapter one, or should I just go to the, about the author and all that crap, let's go to this stuff, alright, let's go, uh, about the author, so I don't have the ebook for this, actually I might, but, you know, let's not let's not even play around with that. Let's uh make sure that I'm here. Can you see? Okay. Can you see me reading? No, it's too close, right? All right. I, Nelly Fuller Jr., the writer author of this book, have been like millions of others, a longtime victim of and servant to. <laughs> can't keep a straight face, man. It's like already you already know you can't. A servant to racism, white supremacy, in all areas of activity. My experience, observations, and our studies have led me to believe the following. Racism has done more to promote non-justice than any other socio-material system known to have been produced or supported by the people of the known universe. Uh, no major problem that exists between the people of the known universe can be eliminated until racism is eliminated. The fear, frustration, malice, and confusion that is caused by racism, white supremacy, retards or prevents all constructive activity between peoples of the known universe. The only form of functional racism that exists among the people of the known universe is white supremacy. The people who have the ability to eliminate racism do not have the will to do so, and the people who have the will to do so do not have the ability. So, look at this right here. He's already telling you the people that could eliminate racism are who. Like, this is one of those things that, because I, I said to myself, look, I don't even need to read this book. I, I got to actually show y'all another book I have. So, the other book I have is Renathia Tate, uh, Pieces of a Puzzle. That right there is a good book, okay? That book is, I mean, it's it's a good book, but she uses this book. She uses so you know, Nelly Fuller Jr. has a couple of proteges in the community. She's one of them. Uh, Francis Cress Wellesing is another one. So it's like these are some good, powerful sisters, but it's just like, but you but you already see why I would have a problem with that. The only people that could eliminate racism are, well, he's gonna is basically the white supremacists. So basically, you are powerless to this system. I don't even want, like. All right, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to keep a straight face. Let's keep a straight face. Come on. <laughs> all right. Regardless of all that has been said or done, the quality of the relationships between white people and non-white people is and has been a total disaster. So I want to also make this clear. You know, you don't want to be white people and non-white people. It's it's you're an African, but you know he doesn't even care for that. It's just justice is better than racism. Uh, as long as racism exists, anything said or done by people that is not intended to help eliminate racism and to help produce justice is a waste of time and energy. Each and every victim of racism should maximize the time and effort spent doing anything other than thinking, speaking, and acting in a manner that helps to eliminate racism. 
uh, white supremacy and helps to establish justice balance between others, uh, justice between people. Each and every person should seek to do this every day in every area of activity, including ac economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, and counter war. So anybody who remembers uh, Raskast, Nature of the Threat, can remember how in Nature of the Threat the brother was like, uh, you know, the brother names these, these, these people activities. Uh, hold on a second, let's get a little close. Uh, my life? Alright. Uh, so let's go back to this. I don't know why my internet looked like it's tripping, but you know, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the purpose of this book to present material in book form that can be used as a basic guide for those individuals, non-white people, who are the victims of racism, victims of white supremacy. Yeah, my question is, why my internet like is like it's Hold on a second. Let me make sure I can be heard. As long as racism is yeah. All right. Okay. The per the present to present the, the to present material in book form that can be used. Or well, the purpose of the book is to present material that can be used in book form that can be used as a basic guide for those individual non-white people who are the victims of racism, victims of white supremacy, who may wish to think, speak, and or act to eliminate racism, white supremacy, and so and do so not as a formalized group but as individual persons. This means that an individual non-white person who is the victim of let me make sure my internet right. right. Who is the victim of uh, victims of a victim of racism, victims of white supremacy, who may wish to think, speak, and or act to eliminate racism, white supremacy, and do so not as a formalized group, but as individual persons. So you're not supposed to be organized. He's telling you, do not organize. You're supposed to act as an individual person. This means that an individual non-white person who is the victim of racism can pick, choose, and support uh, through individual thought, speech, and or action only those parts of the book that he or she, as an individual person, sees fit to support through his or her individual thoughts, pat, speech, and a action. So, you know, I, like, all right, so there was one time the sister that was on my, uh, on my, on my blog. And her, her handle was called sitting ducks, you know? If you are acting as an individual in a group environment, right, you are going to lose out to the I'm trying I'm trying to just read this. I'm trying to just read this. Alright. I'm trying to read this. Alright, so the present <laughs> to present material in book form that can be used as a guide for a complete code of thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which when promoted by an effective number of individual victims of racism will result in a collective effect against racism. So the idea is that a bunch of individuals will pick and choose from a certain code, right? And then by picking and choosing from the certain code, somehow they're going to have some collective effort, even though they're not coordinating with each other. And you know, this is this is a this is still the appendix. I don't know if you guys check this out. This is still the appendix. Wait, let me see if I could look at that. It's like page, not even page one, and you already gotta roll your eyes. Like, come on. All right. Uh, to present material in book form that may serve as a basic guide and or general format for the making of other and different books, which can serve as a complement or a supplement to the codified and or systematic concept of eliminating racism and white supremacy through the thought, speech, and or actions of the individual persons by their own will at a time and place of their own choosing. This should be done without duplicating or repeating what is said herein, right? To help all people to know and or understand truth and to use truth in such a manner as to, justi to produce justice and correctness at all times, in all places, in all areas of activity. To explain the necessity of eliminating functional racism, white supremacy, before attempting to make any other major changes in the socio-material activities of the people of the known universe, and to function as a general guide towards doing so. This is not a book to be used to promote dislike or hatred for white people. This is not a book to be used to encourage animosity towards white people or to promote a dislike for white people because of their whiteness or because they appear to be white to the eye mind of the beholder. This is not a book to be used to embarrass, belittle, nitpick, poke fun at, or otherwise show disregard for any people, be they white, black, brown, red, yellow, blonde, brunette, etc. This book is not designed to be used to oppose any people except those people racially classified as white and only those people as so classified 
who should be blamed for establishing, maintaining, expanding, and or refining the practice of white supremacy, racism, and in any area of people activity, including economics, education, entertainment, law, labor law, politics, religion, sex, and war, and counter war. Yo, I don't know why my internet tripping. Uh, this book, when used correctly, will help to promote thought, uh, speech, and or action specifically designed to help reveal truth and promote the production of justice and correctness to the ultimate purpose of this book and or any part is to help produce justice. Oh, I see. I still have this one program open. Okay, it's a wrap. Okay, hopefully, that's, hopefully that makes it a little better. Uh, and sometimes you got like programs open. Uh, Alright, so how to use this book. Think seriously about everything you read herein. Speak and or act only in support of those observations and or suggestions that you believe will most likely help to reveal truth, produce justice, and produce correctness. Uh, use logic. Ch choose carefully. Think about cause and effect. Do not think, speak, and or act according to any part of this book unless you think that doing so will produce a constructive effect. Uh, study all remarks that seem to be contradictory. Think, speak, and or act only according to what you think will produce the most constructive results. Consider that some speech or action that may be best and correct for one situation may or not be best or correct for another situation. Pages that could have been used at the end of book index are presented in the form of many remarks made in one part of the book being made again in other parts of the book. This is to make it easier for the reader to find similar subject matter throughout the entire work. Everything presented in one part of the work is directly or indirectly related to everything presented in all other parts of this work. The title of the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept should be used to apply to any thought, speech, or action that best helps to produce justice. Justice means guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the people, person who needs help the most gets the most constructive help in all areas of activity. Right? And I mean, again, you have to understand that the concept of justice is is socially biased. Okay? It's socially biased in the sense of uh, or it, it, it's biased on, a, on an ethical... Like, the justice of a crocodile and a wildebeest are two different things. And so, the same way, the justice of a of a... Uh, of a black person and a white person are two different things. You know, we have a a, 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 a legacy of Ma'at, and they have a legacy of Isfah. It's it's two different legacies. So what what justice means for Ma'at is different from what justice means for Isfah. Okay, Isfah, it, it, it's 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 all right. It seems that some parts of the commentary code will not produce the most constructive results in some situations. Do not use those parts in those situations. Choose other parts. Keep in mind that this book is intended to be used by individual non-white persons who are victims of white supremacy, racism, in their efforts to build help to replace the system of white supremacy, racism, with the system to, to best help replace the system of, with the system of justice and correctness, balance between people plus balance between all things, all beings, creatures, and things. Keep in mind that some words used in this book have compensatory codified definitions to be better produced thought, speech, and our action that is intended to result in the use of truth, that is, which is in order to produce justice and correctness. Say or do only those parts of compensatory codification that you think will work best for you and or for others in circumstances similar to yours. Know and understand that some questions, answers, statements, suggestions, etc., may seem simplistic, trivial, and or little of no use. If so, it is correct to ignore them. If not, it is correct to make and that is correct to make constructive use of them. That is a matter of individual choice. Remember that something said or done that is logical in one situation may not be logical to say or do in another situation. Know and understand that no part of this work is intended to produce or support hatred of any person, creature, place or thing. Right? And again, like, you know, that's not that's not say terrible to not want to to want to respect uh, other people you know uh, it's just like, whatever so the importance of correct context so when using words context is extremely important one should always ask what is the context in which the word is being used during the existence of the system of white supremacy racism many people have been taught and were guided into promoting confusion and non-correct conflict by repeating or altering some of the words of the non-white person in a manner that did best result did not best reveal, result, reveal the truth of the intended effect of those words. Therefore, according to the commentary, counter racist logic, and in order to reveal truth in a manner that best promotes the production of justice and correctness, the context in which anything is said or done should be given correct consideration. Okay. 
So that was right there. We we, we, we reached uh, we, we passed through the appendix or whatever or whatever it's called. And we're gonna keep going. Uh, like a crawling infant attempting to walk, all errors are made by any person who seriously attempts to produce justice are errors that can only be revealed through the process of the attempt. The will to produce justice is the first thing that must happen before justice can be produced. The will to produce justice is itself the beginning of the end of error. Therefore, the initial purpose of this work is to help people to produce the will to do justice. So justice is just a silly word, honestly. Uh, Ma'at is more the concept that we can follow. And because justice, what it does is that you have this idea of justice being some objective uh, difference. But again, like I say, compare the wildebeest and the... And the the wildebeest and the lion, you know, the wildebeest and the crocodile, you know, it's a different sense of justice, you know, or the hyena and the lion, you know, two predators, but, but the hyena's like, I'll take what you can't defend, Mr. Lion, you know, and, and, and that's just, that's just what it is, uh, let's see, so let's keep going, all right, information and guide for compensatory thought, speech, and our actions, so we're, we're finally at page one, I'm going to try to just read a few pages, but mm, already, you know, plus I'm getting a little hungry too. <laughs> All right, so racism, a basic perspective. So the matter sometimes referred to as the race problem is the basic initial unfinished business among the people of the known universe. Therefore, it is not possible to effectively speak and or act to eliminate any major problem that involves people without first eliminating the problem of racism, white supremacy, in every area of act people activity, including economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, counter-war. Now, I think it's very important to stop here for a second. Now, this is 1957. And 1957, and even today, but, but, but more so in 1957, white people were 90% of the population. 90% of the American population, and America was, in 1957, uh, the strongest white nation in the world, okay? Only rivaled by the Soviet Union, USSR. Today in America, white people are a majority in every state of the United States, except for maybe three, right? In which case, there's like Asians and Latinos or something, uh, like Hawaii, you know what I mean? Or, or Puerto Rico or something like that. But, but, but... Uh, of, of these three states, uh, white people are the majority in all of them. I think I think if you consider Washington, D.C. a state, which you shouldn't, but if you do consider it a state, then yes, black people are the majority there. Uh, but, of course, that's, that's like a state that has no government or something like that. You know, just a mayor or something. Uh, why why do I bring this up? White people are the majority in 90, inside of 47 of the 50 states, and, and like by far. White people make up 60-something percent of the population. Uh, Latinos make up 16. Black people make up 14. Uh, uh, so so we are... We, the, the idea is this, though. When you look at these areas of activity, right, if white people are the majority and they're wealthy, right, but they're the majority and they're wealthy, why would they not, in their own country, in their own country, dominate in economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex and war and counter war why would they not dominate in these areas of people activity if they are the majority and they're rich okay. this is tough all right in order to do this it is necessary for victims of racism non-white people in effect in effective numbers to know and understand who the racist white supremacy purposes are how they function and for what ultimate purpose the victims of racism must also know and understand how the power of the racist to practice racism can be nullified and or eliminated by victims of racism. I was about to say, this guy's going to put the victim mentality in your head. He's going to drill it into you. You are a victim. But understand, you are in another man's nation. There's no reason for you to be in another man's nation and dominating them uh, in, in, in these people activities, if you will. Okay. Uh, especially if you're not rich. I actually did a poll yesterday. I was like, hey, you know, in South Africa, if in South Africa the Boers did not have wealth, would they be of political significance? Everybody said no. Everybody said no. Well, nobody said, yeah, they'll be of significance because of, you know, uh, because it would be the right thing to do. You understand? The only way that you could be dominated in economics, education, entertainment, law, labor, is if it was like the right thing to do or something. But you're 12% of the, you're 14% of the population, 
86% of the population isn't you. You're 1% of the population wealth. Why would you be dominating in all these things? Come on. Keep, see, keep a straight face on this? Yeah, okay. All right, in order to do this, it is necessary for victims of racism. Oh, yeah, so victims, so victims of racism. So, you, all right, speaking and are acting as an individual person, as an individual person. Look, if you, if you act as an individual, you will always lose. You will always lose. No matter the situation, you will always lose. On top of being a minority, this dude's going to tell you to be an individual. Act like an individual. All right. That's what I'm saying. Like, and I'm not even, I'm not getting emotional. I'm not getting emotional. This is partly, you know, YouTube or something. Let's, let's say it that way. Let's say I'm not getting emotional. <laughs> According to the commentary, count the racist code based on the logic of cause and effect. So cause and effect, effect and cause. Cause and effect, effect and cause. Constructive and non-constructive. Constructive and non-constructive. These are the things to seek to know and understand. Everything that every person and every creature does or does not do is at all times either constructive or non-constructive in effect. There is no other value measured for anything that is said or done. In every area of existence, every event is either constructive or non-constructive. This is according to the logic that is part of the laws of the known universe. According to, you know, and I'll just add, according to Nelly Fuller Jr. All right. So nine major areas of people activity in the known universe. So according to the compensatory rate, counter racist logic, and he's going to cite his own book, the book you're reading right now, to be like, you know, like, I don't even do that. I, I can be like, oh, yeah, according to the book of power. You know, <laughs> while I'm writing the book about, according to the book of power, like, come on. All right. According to the counter, the compensatory counter racist logic, there's reason to believe that there are nine major areas of people activity. According to my book, there is a reason to believe that there are nine areas of people activity. All right. So economics, one, economics, two, education, three, entertainment, four, labor, five, law, six, politics, seven, religion, eight, sex, nine, war and counter war. Okay. So area one, economics, means the correct distribution of... I don't think I can do it. I don't think a black nationalist can keep a straight face. I'm sorry. I don't think it, I don't think it can be done. I do not think it can be done. Oh, hold on a second. This is a religion male who doesn't like. He doesn't even identify as African. His work is not good research for Africans in the religion. Non-white people with the dismantle of the white hegemonic system. Yeah, exactly. Uh, K.W. Don is saying it. Uh, uh, Nelly Fuller Jr. And, and the thing is this: Nelly Fuller Jr. captures the imagination. Like, he, he gives this, he promotes this victimhood. He promotes this victimhood on black people, and he captures the imagination of, of some otherwise brilliant black women, you know? Uh, like Francis Cress Wells and, and, I guess, uh, Ren Renathia Tate. He captures the imagination of them, and then, like, like, like he does this, this victim stuff, you know? Uh, but, you know, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, uh, let's see. So economics means the correct distribution of and or balance between all animals, persons, places, plants, things, etc. Economic in the correct sense is the sum total of all the thought, speech, and their action used to produce maximum efficiency in revealing truth in a manner uh, that promotes the establishment of justice and correctness in all areas of activity. What is he talking about? Okay. Economics also means using all things thought, speech, and or action with maximum efficiency with the objective of eliminating racism, white supremacy. Economics does not mean simply acquiring, saving, and or spending money. Nobody said it did. Economics is not a tool of money. Money is a tool of economics. Economics is the result of people speaking and or acting effectively in the production of justice and correctness. It is not simply how money is handled that determines economics. It is a matter of how everything is handled and to what end. Economics pertains to how all time and all energy is used. What is he talking about? I don't know. Uh, in order for a person who is victim of, who's a victim of racism, a victim, okay, and then he says, a non-white person, so it, you are not, you are a victim if you're a non-white person. And, and understand this, that there are a lot of places on this earth where you are not, uh, you are not, like, 
Like, you have nothing to do with these white folk. You know, like, you have nothing to do with these white folk. There are places on this earth where you will have nothing to do with these white folk. And, and you could move there, but you don't. And instead, you, you, you call yourself a victim. Okay. In order for a person who is a victim of racism, a non-white person, to practice economics, that person must speak and act to produce justice and correctness in the sum total of everything that he or she says and everything he or she does. This includes the use of time and energy in the consumption of food and drink, in acts of sexual intercourse and or thoughts of sexual intercourse, in the use of music in the manner and the use of labor, etc. Like this dude's talking about you gotta think, you gotta, th you gotta limit how you think of sexual intercourse. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? And he wasn't an old man back then. So this is 1957. He was a young man talking about policing people on how they think of sex. Okay. Uh, that's just weird. But okay. Uh, I mean, it's weird if it's an old man, too. But it's just like... Like, this is the book? Like, I, like, like this is like... Like I said, like you can see how many pages I got in. I closed this stuff. I closed it. But for you, for you, I'll, I'll read. All right. Uh, for example, if listening to a particular type of sound inspires a person to think better while performing some function that helps to eliminate racism, then that type of sound becomes music, and that person at that time serves as an economical purpose. The same is true for any other thing and our function pertaining to a person in any of his or her day-to-day -day activities. In regards to any action against racism, economic correctness is not determined by any one thing that a victim of racism does or does not do but by the sum total of everything that the victim does or does not do in terms of effective results against racism. So area two, education means the process of learning all things about all things. What is he talking about? All right. <laughs> He's mad, he's dreaming, y'all. All right. Education means the process of learning all things about all things and or the process of learning all things about one thing. If all is known about one thing, then all is known about all things, because all things are interrelated. Any learning situation is a school, and any school is a learning situation, regardless of time or place. A person who is learning is, at that time, in school. All education should be for the purpose of correct problem solving. Area 3. Entertainment means any activity that is desired or enjoyed including that which is just or unjust and that which is correct or incorrect entertainment can be either constructive or non-constructive labor area four labor means any act of using time and energy to accomplish an objective constructive labor can and should be entertaining area five law means anything that is done that's what law means anything that is done law means anything that is done that's what law means that's that's a very good definition of law area six Politics means people, relations, and or any interaction between people at any time, in any place, in any area of activity. Area 7. Religion means the sum total of everything that a person thinks and everything that he or she says, plus everything that he or she does. A religion is everything, right? A religion includes all parts of a person's existence, each part of each day. Even if those parts are never put into word, words, they are still a part of the person's religion if that person willfully and deliberately speaks and acts according to those parts. Religion is not separate from existence, nor is it separate from any part of existence. A person's religion is anything that a person strongly believes, plus what that person supports by his or her willful actions. Area 8, sex means any socio-material interaction between a male and a female. Uh, so I know y'all, some of y'all getting hype over that, but whatever. War, uh, area 9, war means any willful and deliberate unjust or non-correct speech and or actions that are directly or indirectly used effectively against any creature, person, etc. Counter war means speech and or action used to stop a person, animal, etc. from doing unjust and or non-correct harm and the sum total of all words and all deeds that help to eliminate racism and helps to replace racism, white supremacy, with justice, balance between people. And again, like I, I want to keep repeating to you, balance between people, justice for people, these are not uh, these are not concepts that are real. You're not going to have balance between people. You have white people have been hostile to us for I want to say twenty thousand years, okay? Or even even if you don't want to go that far, you could say. 
8,000 years, okay? 8,000 or 10,000 years. They have been at war with us for, yeah, I want to say 20,000 years. You know, the, the, the ancient Kemet Q tell you, you look at the last pot, you look at the last YouTube, so make sure you subscribe and all that. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, all that crap. But you look at the last one, we talk about the Heru Wars and how the white, pe white people have been trying to conquer us from time immemorial. And they were unable to, except for they did. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's no there's no balance between these people. They do not want to live peacefully. Their sense of justice is is fet. Your goal is to linde ma'at to shinde is fet. Destroy, uh, no no, uh, what was it? Defend ma'at and destroy is fet. Okay, that's your goal. That's your objective. So this whole nonsense idea of Oh, well, we gotta, you know, we have to have balancing people, like, noise, that's just noise, but like I said, make sure you're liking, subscribing, all that stuff, you can help the channel, you can help people uh, come through and see it, you know, come through and see the stuff, alright, uh, no, all the areas of activity are interrelated, what happens in one area affects all other areas of activity, when a person does in the area of economics affects what the person does in the area of religion or sex or war, etc. The racist white supremacists by dominating their victims, non-white people, in one area of activity. All right, so we're getting into the fun part. See, I got a, I got a little. Uh, hold on a second, let me see if I can. I got a little uh, note here. Or not note, but you see this little thing over here that so tells me that there's something probably worthwhile on this page or something ridiculous. Uh, at the same time, also dominates them in all er other areas of activity because all areas are interrelated. It's not like it wasn't already ridiculous, but, you know, that that's like... Okay, so let's go. Four basic motivating factors in people... Let me see, can you see it? Four basic motivating factors in people be behavior in the known universe. So let's see if I, I can probably actually read it like this. According to compensatory counter-racist logic... I probably can. Uh, let's see... There is reason to believe that there are four basic motivating factors in people's behavior in the known universe. There is racism, white supremacy, uh, reaction to racism, right, that's two, three, sexual expression, and four, reaction to sexual expression. Like, this guy sounds like a sexually repressed individual. Why are you talking about sex in a serious book? Uh, not to say that sex isn't serious, it's just it's weird. Um, explanation. <laughs> so he gives an explanation. So racism in the form of white supremacy is the greatest motivating force by people that exists among the people of the known universe. Every person in the known universe is either practicing white supremacy or he or she is compelled at all times to react to those persons who are practicing it. Both the practice of white supremacy and the reaction to it affects all people in all areas of activity, including economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, counter-war. So again, like I want to tell you again, there are isolated areas in this world that are not really impacted by white people, you know? I mean, you could, in some stretch of the imagination, say, yes, they are impacted by white supremacy. Uh, that's fine if you want to stretch your imagination. But the reality is that you can uh, you can live independent of them, um, and and it's just you kind of imagining otherwise. Uh, and and again, this white supremacy, as we know it, as practiced in the, as talked about in this book, is particularly to do with the Eurasian European. So what I so even if you're not an African person, like if you're a Chinese person or a Japanese person, or even a uh, a Arab person, you know you can find you know, within your your community, you can find areas where they are the absolute power, or they are practicing the self rule that you know is a is the objective. And so, whereas whereas the nation at large can interact and engage with these white people, the reality is that you can find yourself, you can essentially have an existence outside of this white supremacy crap, but you don't want to have this existence. And, and, and more or less what Nathan Fuller is doing is doing is he's universalizing the experiences of America. Uh, you know, but it's like, yeah, if you're in America, if you're in a white person's nation, yes, the white person has a lot of power. And you can still find isolated areas in America. Like I said, like, like for instance, in Jamaica, you can find the Maroons. Uh, in, in America, you can find the Dismal Swamp, or you can find the... Uh, 
Although they are getting cut into, but uh, the uh, uh, the Gullah people. You know, you can find the Gullah people uh, among other among other groups. The the point being that you can have that sort of independence outside of the white supremacy system, particularly on the low level of things. But even so, it's like 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 you just like. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Uh, sexual intercourse and or sexual play is the second greatest motivating force by people that exist among the people of the known universe. Every person in the known universe is either engaging in acts of sexual intercourse and or sexual play, or he or she is at all times directly or indirectly reacting to those who are so engaged. What is he talking about? All right. <laughs> Both the acts of sexual intercourse and or sexual play and the reaction to such acts affects all people in all areas of activity. No other socio-material forces by people affect so many people in so many places so much in so many areas of activity as the factors of racism and sex. Like, what is this guy talking about? Please, somebody tell me, what is he talking about? How is sex so... Like, like, like... Like... All right, three basic goals sought by most people in the known universe. According to the compensatory counter-racist logic, which is this book, this book, according to this book, uh, oh no, this is the counter-racist code, so he's talking about the logic. Okay. Uh, there is reason to believe that there are three basic goals sought by most people in the known universe. One, to survive by any means necessary. That's a quote from Malcolm X. Interestingly, so that's probably like a, a later edit, because I don't think Malcolm X said that yet. Uh, 1957, but he might have. Um, he probably did. Uh, of course he did. What am I talking about? So number two, to dominate others known, the to dominate others through deceit and or direct violence, including the threat of or direct violence, the threat of direct violence. Okay, or to establish peace. So explanation: Most people in the known universe have no major goals greater than to survive by any means necessary. Most of the smartest and most powerful people in the known universe have no major goal greater than dominating and abusing others using deceit, direct violence, and or the threat of violence, and a few people have no major goal greater than the establishment of peace. So the smartest and most powerful people in the world are the white supremacists, right? According to Nelly Fuller Jr. And you wonder why I do not like I do not mess with this book. But okay. Two basic problems among the people of the known universe. According to the compensatory counter racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are two major problems among the people of the known universe. One, a lack of knowledge and our understanding of the reason of one's existence, problem solving, and or one's non-existence compounded by and promoted by, two, the practice of racism and white supremacy. So explanation. Every problem among the people of the known universe can be traced to a lack of knowledge and understanding of the logical reason for other existence and non-existence compounded and promoted by the practice of racism in the form of white supremacy. This is, this is true in all areas of activity. So three basic requirements is the establishment of peace. According to the counter compensatory counter racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are <laughs> there's reason to believe. Okay. There's reason to believe that there are three basic requirements in the establishment of peace. One, truth, the revelation of plus justice and correctness. Explanation truth is that which is. Justice is balanced between people, guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the pe people who need help the most get the most constructive help. Again, why would why would any white person want that when they can just all right correctness is balanced between people and all things animals plants minerals and other than etc other than people correctness is whatever produces constructive results let me see how let me see how far I can actually get in this thing because it's just like I think I can probably stop so you know three more pages. Ah, oh, man, this thing. Peace is the result of the revelation of truth and our use of truth in a manner that produces justice and correctness. When all people speak uh, and or act to use truth in a manner that produces justice and correctness at all times, in all places, in all areas of activity, peace is the result. Note, uh, keep in mind that as long as white supremacy and racism exists, there is no way for correctness, for justice and correctness and peace to exist. Keep in mind that everything that you have and everything that you will ever have is a gift to be used only for constructive purposes. Keep in mind that the system of white supremacy, racism, is a system of mistreatment uh, specifically designed to produce great number of throwaway non-white people. 
the term throw the, th the term throwaway people is used to apply to the way that a limited number of non-white people are evaluated from time to time and judged to be fit for extermination and or rendered useless by the racist white supremacists in order to better serve the system of white supremacy producing throwaway people is not unjust is non-just and non-correct so uh this is actually interesting so this is kind of sad a little bit sad you got to realize that this is a black person or blackish person if you will uh who is uh why like who's who's talking about how white people could just kill any black person you know just kill any person and 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 so he's trying to theorize and rationalize it uh realistically speaking though the reality is that this is a white man's nation so yes if you are in another person's nation they have the right to execute you that's that's just what it is and of course you know you could say also in warfare they have the right to execute you uh, because there are no real rights but might in this world, we, you know, with this white world that we're living in. And it's not to say white supremacy, but it's just to say that white people are not following rules. And because they're not following rules, and they have never, and they're not really about following rules, the fact that they have power means that, yes, they can kill, well, first off, they can kill anybody in their borders, period. And that's, nobody cares about that. But they can kill people in other people's borders if they win at war. So you just got to be better and stronger. You can't, and you can't do this individual crap because that's not going to get you better and stronger. Uh, but okay, so the four basic entitlements towards the production of justice. According to the compensatory counter-racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are four basic entitlements towards the production of justice. One, adequate learning facilities for constructive communication so that every person knows the truth about everything that he or she needs to know in order to do what, she should, be, what should be done. Two, adequate housing and constructive control over adequate space land, etc. Three, adequate and progressive health facilities and nutritional products. And four, adequate, safe, comfortable, comfortable, convenient, and efficient transportation. Now, who's going to build this stuff? Okay. Two basic qualifications for producing and or promoting justice. According to the compensatory uh, counter-racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are two basic qualifications for producing and or promoting justice. One, speaking and acting to find and reveal truth in regards to the interaction between all peoples and all er parts of all areas of activity including economics education entertainment labor law politics religion sex and war counter war uh two upon finding truth speaking in our acting so produce justice on the basis of truth found yeah all right so racism some initial questions why some initial questions why race what makes racism so important as uh, a problem? What about the other problems of unemployment, housing, food shortages, healthcare, robbery, and laziness? Okay. What about tribalism and sexism? What about the confusion that exists in the area of religion? What about capitalism and communism and drugs and alcohol and ignorance and pollution and lying politicians? Why race? Is it not narrow-minded to see racism as a major evil? Did not other evils exist long before the practice of racism? What about the problem of distrust and greed and envy and murder among non-white people, as well as white people? What about economics? Why not see to it that everyone is adequately fed and housed first? Why not work to establish a system that guarantees that every person will be comfortable and protected regardless of color or non-color? Why not reach for a greater goal? Why not eliminate the problem of distrust, greed, envy, and murder among all people? Why single out the race issue as being more important than any other problem that continues to plague the people of the known universe? Okay. Um, why continue endless squabbles and the conflict between whites and non-white people? Why not eliminate the other major problems and by doing so through that process dismantle the need for people to practice racist and white supremacy? Why not have the smartest people of goodwill, regardless of color or sex or age, come together and solve the real problems of the world instead of wasting time with what is really an artificial barrier? Right? So those are the questions. Now he's got some answers. See? Racism, uh, I think it's on this page. Yeah. Racism, some initial answers. You see? All right. According to the compensatory counter-racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are three basic types of people in the known universe. One, white people. Two, non-white people. And three, white supremacists, racist man race, and racist woman collectively. So explanation. One, white people are people who are white, who classify themselves as white, who have been classified as white by other people classified as white, who have been accepted as white, and who function as white in all areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, counter-war. 
Two, non-white. People are people who have been classified as non-white and who generally function as non-white in all their interactions with other people classified as non-white and with people classified as white in all areas of activity. The non-white category classification includes all shades of black, brown, beige, tan, red, yellow, etc. So, okay. Uh, three, white supremacists, racist man, racist woman, collectively, are white people who classify themselves as white, who generally function as white, and who practice racial subjugation based on white to non-white classification against people classified as non-white at all times, in all places, and in all areas of activity. They deliberately dominate and mistreat people of color, non-white people. So, now this is the other page. So this is the six most important characteristics. See? And I got a little note on it, so you know it's probably... Probably something in here. Uh, six major, six most important characteristics of racist man and racist woman. According to the commentary, counter racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are six most, there are six most important characteristics of racist man and racist woman. One, racist man and racist woman, white supremacists collectively, is any white man or woman who speaks and or acts in a, such a manner as to produce or promote the practice of white supremacy at all times, in all places, in all areas of activity. Uh, two, racist man and racist woman are collectively the smartest, most powerful, most malicious, most deceitful, most technical, most efficient, most inventive, and most skillfully violent of all the people of the known universe. The racist man and racist woman is, you see, the smartest. Okay. Racist man and racist woman have as their ultimate objective the eternal promotion of their pride, ego, and arrogant incentive by practicing the internal domination and abuse of people who they classify as non-white. Uh, let me turn off this uh, thing. It's too loud. Uh, race, uh, number four. Racist, and racist man and racist woman always use deceit in direct violence, uh, direct violence and are the threat of direct violence to accomplish their ultimate objective of establishing, maintaining, expanding, and or refining the practice of racism and white supremacy. Five, racism and racist man and racist woman do not at any time uh, willfully and deliberately do or say anything without the intention of establishing, maintaining, expanding, or not refining the practice of racism in all areas of activity. So these people are pretty dang crafty and intelligent, obviously, uh, according to Nelly Fuller Jr. Number six, racist man and racist woman by practicing not racism are the greatest promoters of falsehood, non-justice, and incorrectness among the people of the known universe. Notes. Racist man and racist woman make it their business to train their victims, non-white people, to react to every situation in a manner that causes their victims to do more harm to themselves than they do to the system of racism and white supremacy. Uh, white supremacy racism. A skilled white supremacist takes great pride in his or her ability to predict with great precision what it is that a non-white person will do or say, and will do so or say in most or all situations. Right? And again, you have to understand, this is the white man's nation. So what he's doing is he's governing his nation, the white man. He's governing his nation, and he has this foreign population within that he has to curb because this foreign population is seeking... Whenever the foreign population is seeking self-determination. Okay? That's what it is. Uh, but whatever. Let me see if I could... Because my thing is... This is this is just like... This... Alright. Let's keep going. A skilled white supremacist usually knows exactly what a non-white person is thinking. They usually know what to do or say to a non-white person or about a non-white person, the things that will make that non-white person be calm, be sad, be happy, and be or be wildly angry. You know, and, and that's that's all right because you know, you see how you see how a lot of black people say, "Oh no, you call me the N-word? Okay, I'm gonna fight." You know, like like it's a, it's a sense of control of you, right? But uh, I'll, I'll give them that. All these reactions are designed to be for the benefit of the white system of white supremacy. Yeah, okay, like like what are you talking about? So, all right, whatever. They make the they make a precise study of a non-white person's strengths and weaknesses. They under they usually make sure that they know more about the non-white person than that non-white person would ever know about them. The white supremacist racism racist. The white supremacists are usually the masters in the science of getting a non-white person to talk about their personal feelings in regards to all the nine areas of people activity: economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex and war, counter war. They're usually the masters at getting non-white people to do things out of emotion rather than the use of logic. And you know, I'll, I'll give them that too because we do talk about our feelings in regards to, you know, the white man's politics. Why? Why why, why do you have feelings? You know? Uh, you know, not to say that one is not better than the other, just say, you know, why do you have feelings? You know? Uh, three basic characteristics of racist white supremacists. So according to the compensatory counter-racist logic, there is a reason to believe that there are three basic characteristics of racism. There's one, 
they are powerful. Two, they are smart and or sophisticated. And three, they are malicious and or hostile. Explanation, the racist white supremacists by comparison and relationship to non-white persons are the most powerful of all the people of the known universe. They are willing and able to dominate all non-white people at all times, in all places in the known universe and in all areas of activity. The white supremacists are smart. They are also very sophisticated. They have a great deal of knowledge and understanding of many things. They are not naive or simple-minded. Their thoughts, speech, and actions are usually complex or greatly evolved in form of technique. In form and technique. Mana worship them. You know? He all worship them. You know, you know. Alright. Involved in form and technique. They are very misleading of others and are very clever in doing so. The white supremacists are malicious, they are hostile, they willfully and deliberately practice great deceit and great violence against people classified as non-white. They do this for the purpose of maintaining permanent domination and to glorify white supremacy as being the best of all possible forms of existence in any place at any time, at all times throughout the universe, both known and unknown. It's very important to understand though that if you are white, of course you're going to look at a system that benefits you disproportionately as the best system. You know? Especially if that system is being practiced in your own nation. But, you know, go off. Three basic characters of non-white people. So this is a characteristic... This is the ca Keeping a straight face, right? Three basic characteristics of non-white people. So according to the compensatory counter... Uh, look, you can see. I'm not making this up. Not making this up. You can see. It's powerless and all that, right? So... Three basic, according to the three basic characters of non-white people is one, powerless and pitiful, two, primitive and or ignorant, and three, stupid and or silly. These are the basic characteristics of non-white people. They are powerless and pitiful, primitive and or ignorant, stupid and or silly. And, and see, see, this is the thing. We, we say, hey, I actually sometimes agree with this guy. The guy says you are powerless and pitiful, primitive and ignorant, stupid and silly. In a book. So non-white people, by comparison and in relationship to the white supremacists, are powerless and pitiful. Uh, non-white people are pitiful because of their lack of power and or because of their lack of will and ability to think, speak, and act effectively against injustice. In a world socioeconomic system dominated by white supremacy, the words powerless and pitiful are terms to best describe all non-white people, both individually and collectively, at all times and all places, in all areas of activity, including economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, counter-war. Some may or may not be primitive, some may or may not be stupid or silly, but all are powerless and pitiful. Of all the white people in the known universe, it is, and look, 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 Power is in nations, okay? Power is in nations. If you are in another man's nation, yes, you may well be powerless, you know? Or powerless, relatively powerless, right? But you have to go to your own nations, build your own uh, communities, build your own uh, nationality. When you do that, no, you will not be powerless. The Chinese man is not powerless. The Arab man is not powerless. They have power. It's Yes, the white man, the white man in America does have more power. But uh, he may have more power because... He, he has a nation because he's organized. If, the white, if, the, if America did crumble, the white man in America would not have power. You're not, you know, you're not, you're not getting it, though. You know, even when you come to, you know, the, the group nobody want to chat about, you know? It, when they, uh, let me see something. The pimp used nearly for the junior talking point in debate with white supremacists and got washed, yeah. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tariq, yeah, yeah. Washed. He got total washed. Tariq Nasheed got washed by Jared Taylor. It was it was ridiculous. It was it was it was a waste of a waste of breath, a waste of time. But you know, psh, all right. Of all the white people in the known universe, because Jared Taylor's sitting there like, why in the world? Like you're saying that we set up China being dominant? Like yeah, you you and, and, and <laughs> Tariq Nasheed's like yeah, you set up. You set up everything. You set up everything. Everything you do. And, 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 the, and the white boys are sitting there like, that's news to me. You know, and he he a certified. I'm not even going to. All right. Uh, of all the white people in the known universe, it is the white people who practice white supremacy racism that have the greatest will 
and greatest ability to do whatever they choose to do in all areas of activity. They have shown through the practice of white supremacy that they have great will and great ability to subjugate non-white people through the skilled use of deceit and violence. They maintain the subjugation through a day-to-day -day code of thought, speech, and action utilizing a variety of words and or deeds in a manner that promotes falsehood, non-justice, and incorrectness. Non-white people, however, because of the lack of skill and ability in one or more area of activity, are both powerless and pitiful in comparison to the white supremacist races who are subjugating them. The term pitiful best describes all non-white people. And it's not me, not me saying this. It's not me saying this. You know? I think it's this line right here. All non-white people. Wait, I'm showing the wrong page. Oh. All non-white people. You see that? The term pitiful best describes all non-white people. So, so, you know, like, like people say, why, what? Look, man, why, why are you hating on? Uh, why are you? Uh, me hating? Me hating? Uh, what's this? And look, I got the book. I got the book. You know, show me where he has my book. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got the book. I got a right to, you know, I got a right to be like, I got a right to be disappointed. I, mean, I knew I would be disappointed. I know I would be this disappointed. All right. So non-white people, by comparison and in relationship to the white supremacist racists, are most of the times in most areas of activity primitive. This means that they are relatively simple-minded and elementary in thought, speech, and action. It means that they are comparatively not greatly evolved in knowledge and understanding of most things in most areas of activity. They are not smart or sophisticated in their attempts to prevent being subjugated by the white supremacists. They are usually easily fascinated, uh, deceived, and victimized by any white person who believes in and knows how to practice white racism and white supremacy. Primitive people are not necessarily savage or brutal. Many of them are very non-offending. Many of them are very, very meek. However, those people, those non-white people who best fit the description of primitive are people who do not know or understand very much as compared to a smarter and more sophisticated people such as the white supremacists. Non-white people lack both the will and the ability to do most of the things that needs to be done to produce justice and correctness. The white supremacists, by comparison, only lacks the will. They have the ability but refuse to use it. In this regard, the white supremacists are not as primitive as their subjects, but they are definitely more savage. Like, this is the most white supremacist text I've ever read, I feel. I feel. I mean, I, mean, I don't really read white supremacist texts, but I'm saying this is... This is this is saying a white. This is a white superiority text. That's what I should say. This is one of those texts that's just boast about how much more superior the white man is to the black person. But you know, non-white people by comparison. And this is why I be going off on these people, these nearly full of rights. You know, well, I'm a victim of white supremacy. I'm a victim of racism and white supremacy. Get get out of here, man. That's why I don't even use the word white, 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 white supremacy. I don't even use it. I don't even use it. You know, uh, but let's keep going. Non-white people, by comparison and in relationship to the white supremacists, are most of the times, in most areas of activity, stupid and or silly. Most of the times, most of the time, do not think. Most of them, most of the time, do not think, speak, and or act seriously or ineffectively in a manner that helps to produce the remote the elimination of racism and the establishment of justice and correctness. See, when I, when I did my other thing, when I did my other text, I did my speech on how there are three thinkers in America that just promote black, uh, four thinkers in America, I think. It was either three or four. No, I think three. That just promote black self-hatred, or b hatred of the other black man, you know? And I mean, some of you just didn't, you know, some of you were just like, why do you name those people? You know? I said, Nelly Fuller Jr., Malcolm X, and Amos Wilson. They just always get it on black people, you know? But you can't, you can't, this is, this is proof in the pudding. Okay, this is proof in the pudding. This is proof positive. You know, you might, you might, you might want to be like, oh, I don't really see these other people. You can't, you can't not see it here. You can't not see it here. Since this is who we are victims of injustice and incorrectness that is greatly promoted through racism and white supremacy, the non-white people of the known universe can be correctly judged as stupid and are silly when compared to the racist white supremacists. The racists are powerful, smart, and malicious. They are unjust, but they are not stupid, and they are not silly. They know what needs to be done, and they are not. They are smart enough and powerful enough to do it. They know that justice should be produced, but they refuse to produce it. Their victims are non-white people when willing simply do not know to produce it. It is, however, correct 
for them to always try. It is their duty to always try. Consider the circumstance the establishment of justice may be the assignment mission of all non-white people of the known universe. Uh, why do I say, why, why do I bring this up? Um, Alright, so four basic types of power among the people of the known universe. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, how do you, how do you, how do you see, like, people, people actually read this thing. People actually read this thing and walk out with, oh man, what an excellent book. Alright, uh, let's go. Alright, so four basic th types of power among the people of the known universe. According to the compensatory counter-racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are four basic types of power among the people of the known universe. All power. So power exercised by the known and unknown, uh, the unknown and the unknown. So that would be God, the Creator, Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, the All-Wise, Brahma, the Holy Ghost, etc. So you notice that all these are Eurasians, but whatever. Uh, superior power, which is white supremacy. Power exercised by the collective white supremacist racist over against all of the non-white people of the known world. Inferior power, that's power exercised by the non-white people who exist in subjugation to the white supremacist racist. And immediate power, power exercised by any person, animal, insect, etc. to directly cause and or effectively threaten to cause the death of and a serious injury to any person, animal, insect, etc. And, and see... I need... I, get my text, get my book, okay? Get my book. You can't be reading this thinking this is serious stuff. You can't read this stuff. You, you Get my book. Get my book. I'm going to try to read up to page 20. So we're at page 13. I'm going to try to read up to page 20. But, but like... Alright. Explanation. The force that is most often referred to as God, the Creator, Allah, etc. As in the greatest force in the known universe, this force, the sum total of all that is known and unknown, is generally thought to be a power that is greater than all other powers in the known universe. Even though there has been great disagreement about the form of this force, there is little disagreement regarding the existence of this power or the existence of a closely interrelated combination of forces that cause this power. Uh, okay. Superior power, which is white supremacy, the power is second only to all power among the people of the known universe. It is the power exercised by those white people who practice white supremacy, racism against all of the people of the known universe who are classified as non-white. Those white people who practice white supremacy racism are not the supreme power in the universe over all things at all times. They do, however, exercise superior power over the non-white people of the known universe in all things at all times. The ability to cause non-white people to speak, to think, speak, and or act according to the will dictates and or requests of the white supremacists is what makes the white supremacists supreme over the non-white people who submit to and or who cooperate with them in one or more area of people activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, counter war. The power of the white supremacists to dominate all the non-white people is proof of their superior power. Okay. Inferior power. This is the so-called power uh, non-white people, uh, my white person has, which is truly a lack of power and of the lack of the will and ability to do anything of comparative significance without the direct or indirect force, approval, or voluntary support of the white supremacists, racists, and or the white people in general. So, you, you, you want, what I, what, this is why I even picked up this book, because I was like, Renatia Tate, in her book, said that, nearly for the junior said, that you can't eliminate racism, only white people can. So I was like, nah, let me read this. But I can't read through it, because it's like, this is... This is hard to stomach, you know. I'm having fun reading it with you all. So if you guys, if you guys, like I said, if you guys like this, you know, like, subscribe, uh, share, all that stuff. But uh, I don't know if I can stomach it. I don't know if I'm gonna finish this book. I mean, I, I, somebody gotta read it to me. I want somebody to read it to me. I don't wanna read it to y'all. I don't wanna read it. Uh, immediate power. The power that an individual has that enables him or her to act immediately and effectively without the consent of any other person. Most individuals have this power that they can employ immediately. This power consists of the will plus the means, ability of causing the death of any person, animal, insect, etc. Most people, class, regardless of their racial classification, are usually able to eliminate, execute, and or cause the death of an animal, plant, insect, and or another person. 
To eliminate the existence of self or other at will is one of the few powers that an individual person can exercise that can immediately change the current status and or halt the thought, speech, and action of others. Immediate power is the most direct form of power that can be utilized by an individual since it does not require the permission or cooperation of any other person. Immediate power, like very few other forms of power, can be used for purposes that are either just or non-just. Immediate power should never be used for non-just and or incorrect purposes, even if trying to accomplish a just or correct goal. So, he, so, and that's what I'm saying. So, technically, that that was like the fun part. That was like, oh, yes, let's talk about immediate power, which is like basically just killing people, right? Let's talk about that. He's like, no, 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 don't use that. Don't use that even for good. Don't, don't kill people. All right. Uh, I don't know how my internet working, but basically I just made a face. Uh... Two basic classes of people in the known universe. So according to the compensatory, according to the compensatory uh, counter racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are two basic classes of people in the known universe. That is, one, the powerful class, the white supremacists, and two, the powerless class, all non-white people and those white people who are not white supremacists. So explanation. And so this is actually not unreasonable. All right, this is not actually unreasonable. There is what I would call a ruling class and a ruled class okay so there's a ruling class and a ruled class but that's like in every nation it's not this whole world is dominated by white supremacists or whatever that's that's just ridiculous it's conspiracy theory literally it's conspiracy theory literally literally conspiracy theory uh but you know go off Explanation. Since the establishment of white supremacy racism among the people of the known universe, the terms upper class, middle class, and or lower class have become so meaningless that, they, that to use such terms to describe any person, people that does not promote the promotion of the production of justice but serves only to promote greater confusion. It is therefore best to use terms to describe any person now. It is best to not use such terms to describe any person, any people now in existence in the known universe. Under the system of white supremacy, and as long as white supremacy exists, the best and most accurate way of describing people to describe people is the term in terms of class is to describe their power relationship to each other. By doing so, all white people who practice white supremacy, racism must be recognized as the only people in the known universe who are the powerful class. All non white what is wrong? This guy don't go outside. The known universe. Stop, 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 stop. Like he doesn't go outside. Gus T. Renegades from the Cows uses Nelly Fuller's work as their Bible, and they are self-defeated. I never listen to Cows. Never listen to Cows. Never. I never listen to Cows. I never listen to Cows. Hold on, let me turn that down. But it's like, yeah, Nelly Fuller Jr. is a freaking joke. Uh, he's a joke. He's a joke. And, and, and like, like, seriously? Come on. Uh... Let's go back to this thing I was doing. Uh, as long as white supremacy exists, the best and accurate well, uh, power relationship to each other. By doing so, all white people who practice white supremacy must be recognized as the only people in the known universe who are the powerful class. All non-white people are subject to the powerful class and are therefore the powerless class. In addition, those peop white people who do not practice white supremacy are also the powerless class. However, those white people who do not practice white supremacy are not subject to the white supremacists. What is he talking about? Of course, whatever. Like, whatever. The fact that no white person is subject to the white supremacists, what is he talking about? All right. Greatly confuses many non-white people. Some non-white people think that some white people are victims of white supremacy. They believe this when they see or hear about some white people doing things to harm other white people. They then conclude that some white people practice white supremacy against each other. Such a conclusion is incorrect. No, the whole premise of white supremacy is incorrect. The whole premise of white supremacy is incorrect. It's not, it's not, uh, like, no, it's not, uh, no white person is, uh, the, uh, all, uh, white people do, do practice acts of non-justice against each other, but it's not possible for a white person to practice the major unjust act of white supremacy against another white person. All people practice non-justice against each other, white and non-white, all of the time, in all places. What do you mean all of the time in all places? Like, what are you talking about? What, what is, why are you so general? 
In all areas of activity, the master injustice, however, is white supremacy racism and is only practiced by white people against non-white people. No white person is or can be subject to white supremacy. It is possible, however, for a white person to be powerless to do anything that is effective against the practice of white supremacy. Some examples of such persons are white people who are infantile or senile in the mind and body, and they are they are completely dependent on others for all their care and are completely incapable of doing harm to others. Some, since all the white people who practice white supremacy are the powerful class, it generally serves no useful purpose for a non-white person to worry about which individual white person is more powerful than another within that class. Uh, a white supremacist is a white supremacist powerful person. How one white supremacist relates to another white supremacist at any particular moment should be of no major concern to a non-white person since all white supremacists are committed to the practice of white, of white supremacy. Now again, uh, uh, yeah, the cows never know. Cows will not have solutions. Uh, what I, what I want to say is this. Uh, I'm committed to the practice of racism. Uh, yeah, so understand that white people are set up in a hierarchy, and you need to be set up in a hierarchy, okay? So white people have a leadership structure. So, like, technically, like, for instance, today, Trump is above other white people, or the legislators are above the, you know, whatever, or even the police chief or the police captain is above the uh, the police officer. Like, this, there's hierarchies in everything. The judge is above. Like, the whole idea, well, we shouldn't even study the distinction, like, Oh. Hold on a second. Uh, I didn't want to only go to a thing, but I also want to. Yeah, I think I want to. I think I want to go a little bit further than page twenty because I, I remember that there was. This is, I really want to go into how he talks about organizing. Okay, and that's really important to me. Before I just close the book and tell you guys, you know, whenever somebody talks crap, I just tell them to go watch it. Uh. Uh, in any event, the white supremacists who, as individuals, are smarter than many other white supremacists will in all matters involving the maintenance of white supremacy give effective support to those who are not so smart. This guarantees that all people classified as white supremacy are almost automatically entitled to receive benefits special only to people, no, sorry, all classified as white are automatically entitled to receive benefits specific, special only to people classified as white in the socio-material system uh, dominated by the white supremacists, the powerful class. In addition, the very existence of white supremacy racism uh, automatically eliminates the possibility of any non-white person being so-called upper class or middle class in his or her relationship to any person in any place at any time. Such persons are all subject class and are powerless class uh, are, and are the powerless class. So I think it's really important for us to also distinguish between not just hierarchy, but also how white people uh, dominate black people. And the way how they dominate black people is that, yes, they do have us in different areas. So you will have black people in, like, basically, like, if you go to, uh, not to say that I want to use this white boy's example, but you, you would have a proletariat, a, a petty bourgeoisie, and a lumpen proletariat. And they are different, they are different in the whole scheme of things. So if you do have the bourgeoisie, the petty bourgeoisie, you know, does have a different existence in the proletariat. Who does have a different existence from the lumpen proletariat, you know? And those are like Wazungu terms, of course. But but basically, what it means is that, you know, uh, the petty bourgeoisie might be like the people who are kind of self-employed or under good employment. You know, the proletariat might be like the working class, the workers. They they, they don't really have good uh, good opportunity. They don't really have good economics, whatever. But the lumpen proletariat might be the people who are more or less habitually homeless, habitually on welfare, and habitually so on and so forth. Uh, or, or even like in public housing and resident, you know, they have a different experience. They all three groups have a different experience. You know, I don't have the same experience as, as, as every other black person. Uh, and and you know, and and you have to think about that accordingly. You know, and strategize accordingly. You know, it's like it's like it's like for instance, I mean, it's 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 complicated, but you know, it's not like like this is nonsense. Uh, it's not nonsense. I like I, it's, this is actually probably the best part, but. It's not so. Uh, powerless class. All right. So as long as white supremacy exists, I hopefully this uh, I caught up. But as long as white supremacy exists, it is false and incorrect to say any non-white person is upper class or middle class. How can they be? If they are upper class or middle class, upper or middle of what? As compared to what? As compared to who? Certainly not white people, and definitely not white supremacists. So I mean, like, like that's not totally unreasonable, you know? Like technically, even if I were, you know. 
Like, it's complicated. It's complicated. You know? To say that there's no black person in a higher class than a white person, like, it depends on what you're talking about. Like, if you're talking about in America, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about, like, politically, probably. You know, probably there's not, you know, maybe. I don't, like, it's complicated. It's really complicated. You know, it's it's not that straightforward. But, like, if you're talking about, like, in Africa, no. Uh, yeah, black. there are black people with higher positions than white people, than, like, regular-ass white people. That's just ridiculous otherwise. Uh, like, it's just ridiculous to think otherwise that, you know, like, 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 you know, there, there, there are presidents who have white people bowing at them. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, like, like white royalty, if you, if you think they could be royal. Uh, all right. Definitely not. Certainly not white people and definitely not white supremacists. So, in matters of class, non-white people, uh, compare each other, which under white supremacy is not only meaningless, pitiful, an admission of weakness and their subservience to white supremacy racism, but also acknowledgement of their fear to openly admit it. Even though all non-white people are functionally lower class, meaning they are all lower in comparison to the white supremacist races of the known universe, it is better to not say that they are lower class. To do so would be to promote questions regarding the confusing terms upper class or middle class. Therefore, I'm referring to the class status of all non-white people, and it is better to say that they are a powerless class. As long as white supremacy exists, it is incorrect for any non-white person to pretend that he or she is any class of person uh, other than the powerless class. So two facts. So remember, I just want to go to the. I really want to reach to this, uh, raise this meism, and all that stuff. Like, I think it's gonna be. Oh, actually, this like might be page twenty. Let me see. Hold on a second. Yeah, it looks like it might be page twenty. So yeah, page twenty is a good place. For that. The fa two facts: the white people of the known universe collectively. I'm on page sixteen right now. Okay. Uh, you can't see that, but I'm on page 16. The two white people, the, the white people of the known universe, yeah, two facts. So the white people of the known universe collectively are the smartest and most capable of all people. How many times are you going to say this thing? Look at this crap. How many times are you going to say this? It's like, wait, can you see? Wait, hold on. Can you see? The white people of the known universe collectively are the smartest and most capable of all people. And the white supremacist, racist man and racist woman collectively are the smartest and most capable of all the white people. Of all the people in the known universe, it is those white people who practice racism and white supremacy who have the greatest ability to use truth and to use it in such a manner as to produce justice and correctness in all places, in all areas of activity, in the shortest period of time. The white people who practice racism know that they could, if they choose to do so, produce justice and correctness between and among the people of the known universe. They are smart enough to do this. They also know, however, that there is a process of producing justice and correctness. They would also eliminate racism, white supremacy. Knowing this, they have chosen not to practice justice and correctness. They prefer to continue to practice racism, even though they fully understand that in order to practice racism, they must do so by promoting falsehood, non-justice, and incorrectness. Now, of course, the, if you're trying to dominate a nation, if you're trying to dominate another people, yes, and those people are great people. Black people have a great history. Why would you tell them they're great history and they're great people if you're trying to dominate them and you're trying to abuse them? Why would you do that? You have to understand that. And also, if you're trying to get the resources of Africa, why would you want the people of the black people to be able to defend those resources? Why would you promote them being able to defend the resources of their land if you want to dominate them? You're being ridiculous when you think these kind of things. And it's... it's The white people who practice racism, uh, wait, let me see, oh yeah, they apparently have judged that white supremacy is better than revealing truth. They apparently believe that the value of white supremacy is at least as valuable as the practice of justice and correctness. To them, the promotion of white supremacy has proven to be in many ways better than justice and better than correctness. Like, how do you read this? How do you sit down and read this? That's what I want to get. Why do you... They apparently, <laughs> they apparently believe that the value of white supremacy is at least as valuable as the practice of justice and correctness. To them, the promotion of white supremacy has proven to be, in many ways, better than justice and better than correctness. The white supremacist races have a total need to be and to feel supreme over all non-white people at all times. The supremacy is what they value most, even though they know that it can only be maintained by promoting falsehood, non-justice, and correctness. And th this, is why, this is why I don't take black people seriously. You know? Uh... I mean, you can't, if this guy is saying this stuff, if he's out here saying this stuff, and then you are out here promoting his work, why would anybody take you seriously? 
Why are you promoting the work of somebody who says these kind of things? Why are you reading this? This is two hundred. This is this is this is this is four hundred pages. Four hundred pages. I only read twenty pages, and I'm saying to myself, this is nonsense. This is stupid. And instead of and you read the four hundred pages. You read it. Through the skilled use of deceit, direct violence, and our threat of direct or indirect violence, the masters of their racism and white supremacists have chosen to continue this practice of no apparent reason other than to, pr to be proud of themselves for causing others to be fearful of them and to be dependent upon them. Such a relationship is not non-just and incorrect. This is not the way that any people should relate to each other. So again, you know, you're after the resources of Africa. You're after the resources of the continent. It's not to, oh, I feel so good. I'm proud that people are fearful of me. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You can't read this with a straight face. You can't. No. No. Answer the freaking YouTube, the, the YouTube title. Uh, can a black nationalist read Nearly Fuller with a straight face? No, you cannot. You cannot do that. No, you can't. You can't. Those white people who practice white supremacy should stop doing so. They should strive to become wise instead of being satisfied with being smart. The knowledge and understanding that they possess is a gift. The gift should not be wasted on what is fundamentally an ego-producing enterprise. It is incorrect to squander the gift of knowledge and understanding on the promotion of racism and white supremacy. All knowledge and all understanding should be used to produce a universe in which no people, white or non-white, abuse each other. So that's not going to happen, okay? So this is this is my this is why I want to like this, look at like it's page uh, 18. So we have we have three more pages, okay? So there is reason to believe that the basic duty of each and every person in the known universe is to find truth and to use truth in such a manner as to produce justice and correctness at all times, in all places, in all areas of activity. In, in practice, there is no other way for any person in the known universe to justify his or her continued existence. So the two basic reactions to racism and white supremacy. According to the compensatory, compensatory counter-racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are two basic reactions to racism. This one is cooperation with white supremacy, or two, resistance to white supremacy. So explanation. Cooperation with white supremacy racism means any thought, speech, and or action by per persons that directly or indirectly helps to promote white supremacy racism. Resistance to white supremacy means any thought, speech, and or action by person that is effective against white supremacy and is intended to be and is intended to be. In a world socio-material system dominated by racism, every person who is physically and or mentally able to do so is either cooperating with the white supremacy or resisting it. Every white person who is physically and or mentally able to willfully and deliberately cooperate with the white supremacist racist and who does so is a white supremacist. A white person who speaks and or acts effectively against racism is not a race racist white supremacist but this is only during the period when he or she is actually speaking and or actually acting effectively against white supremacy. No white person, however, is or can be a victim of white supremacy. That is true of those who practice white supremacy and those who do not. During the existence of racism, no white person, no non-white person is or can be a racist. A person cannot be subject to racism and be a racist at the same time. This is according to the compensatory counter-racist logic. As long as the white supremacy exists, all non-white people are victims of white supremacy. Those who willfully and deliberately operate with white supremacy are victims, as well as those who resist it. Uh, so black black people are always a victim. You're always a victim. All right. Let me just make sure. I want to make sure because. I'm trying to find out where he, I might have to like jump to that aspect, that part of the book. I don't think I got this one though. This is okay. Law compensation comes into the law compensation. Oh yeah, okay, so I'm going to jump ahead. To page 51 after this okay so after i get to the end of the uh under socio material conditions dominated by white supremacy any white person who practices racism is a racist white supremacist in addition any white person who is able to uh speak and or act against white supremacy even under the threat of death and who does so during any period when he or she is not doing so is a racist white supremacist the correct description for such a person is racist suspect or suspected racist so that's what you hear uh, uh, what's his name saying 
sorry, just see it. So, five major political isms in the thought, speech, and our actions of all people in the known universe. According to the common story, counter racist logic, there is reason to believe that there are five major political isms in the thought, speech, and our actions of all people in the known universe. Racism, one of one or more white supremacist white people use deceit, direct violence, and or all right. Let me just skip this crap. So there's racism, blah 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 blah. Two basic racist systems: racist speech and counter racist. Blah 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 blah. Uh, two basic methods of practicing racism, white supremacy. Uh, so the four basic stages of racism, blah blah blah. All right. So let me skip ahead. We're going to jump ahead to. Uh, let's see. We're gonna jump ahead to page 51, okay? We're gonna jump ahead to page 51, okay? Uh, Cause I'm trying to wrap this up. Let's see. Uh, there's two basic methods for resisting racism, white supremacy. There's four wallism and open airism, okay? So the four wall method. The four wall method of fighting racism, white supremacy is the general title given to the concept of having a special meeting place for those pe persons who seek to resist white supremacy. Racism, for the most part, is also includes the following: regular meetings by two or more persons the renting or, or buying of meeting halls, spaces, and or buildings, repeated fundraising, centralized and or closed in activities, formal acquisition and storage of supplies to be distributed or sold for support of organizational activities, mandatory and regular payments or dues, payments of salaries and or giving of awards to organizational personnel, regular accumulation of funds for, regular, for legal fees, etc., designated leadership, people who regularly give orders or directives, designated followership, uh, people who regularly follow the orders and or directives of the persons who are designated as leaders, promoting the practice of thinking, speaking, and or acting as if in a particular number of people people situated in a certain place at a certain time and calling themselves a particular name or a title constitute an organization, promote the practice of calling an area of land by a specific name or title and or relate, referring to it as a country, a nation, state, etc. You know, <laughs> nation of Islam. All right. Promoting the practice of calling an area of land. Oh, yeah. I think I just read that one. Promoting the practice of uh, calling people by a specific name and or title, and then associating that name and or title with the name and or th title associated with a particular area of land. Promoting the practice of associating a person with a thing by speaking and or acting in a person and the thing are one and the same and or the person that a thing represents each other. Example, buildings, flags, maps, pictures, spaces, statues, etc. So the four wall method is the standard and or traditional method used by victims of white supremacy. It is called the four wall method because the non-white people who use this method generally plan, talk, and try to inspire each other by meeting every other reg me meeting each other regularly in a building space that has four walls. The walls may be of stone, wall, wood, wire, or other or some other structure. The effectiveness of the meeting and the accomplishment of their purpose is oftentimes judged on the basis of the number of people that appears within a walled area at the same time. If the same people assemble often enough, they are usually asked for or expected to assemble regularly. Uh, they may be awarded a name and or title and told that they are members of an organization of people. The structure, building, etc. where the members meet is usually considered to be the headquarters or central meeting place. The total number of people who appear regularly at that particular place oftentimes me measure the power of the people attending the meeting as their headquarters. Uh, those people who appear regularly are usually expected to contribute money, socialize, and use names and are titles that are associated with the particular assembly of people of that particular place or assembly. So, of course, it sounds like the UNIA, right? So, does he like this idea? Right? So, in a world socioeconomic dominated by white supremacy, the four wall method of resisting white supremacy has the following weaknesses. Oftentimes, uh, many of those most effective people who attend counter racist meetings do not intend to help eliminate racism but are sent and or financially assisted by the racist white supremacists to work to defeat the purpose of the meetings. Uh, so he's talking about spies, I guess. Two, uh, when money is collected, much of it is used for purpose other than the elimination of racism. Okay. Three, oftentimes too much time, energy, and money is spent trying to maintain the four walls or regular structures or place where the people assemble to talk about that they should or should not be doing to accomplish their goals. Uh, another one. Power is told often judged on the basis of the number of people who attend a particular meeting and or on the basis of how crowded a particular wall structure was at a particular time. Uh, squabbling is usually increased as the number of people attending to the meetings increase, usually because of the production of personality clashes. The next one. Those who are lax in attending meetings and those and or those who are not considered members of the organization are generally treated as unimportant, uncooperative, and or as outsiders. And then next one, promoting the appearance of being substantially effective against racism without being substantially effective against racism and white supremacy. But again, you have to understand that you're an organization. If you're an organization within a nation, then you're not going to be much competition. 
to the nation. You have to be a nation yourself. You have to be a nation yourself. Uh, and then you could be competition to a nation. But you're not a nation within a nation. That's ridiculous. You know, and that's, that's actually something that Amos Wilson says in the, in, the, in the blueprint for black power. So that's why I, I was trying to read it, and I was like, no, not reading this either. Uh, but it's, not, it's definitely not as bad as you. This is terrible. This is terrible. Uh, uh, the open air method. So the open air method of resisting racism and white supremacy is pr practically the functional opposite of the four wall method. The open air method is generally characterized by informal communication and association, no regular meetings, no renting or buying of meeting halls, and or buildings, no repeated fundraising activities, no formal acquisition of storage or supplies to be distributed or sold for support organizational activities, no payment of organizational dues, no payment of salaries and or giving of awards to organizational personnel, no regular accumulation of funds for legal fees, etc. No designated leadership, every person speaks and or acts as his own leader according to the individual selections from a code of thought, speech, and action. Remember how people say, we gotta be on code. And we don't have any leaders. We don't need any leaders. Leaders are for blah blah blah. This is this 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 is Daily Fuller, and it's it's traitor talk. It's traitor talk. The white white people are not operating on a code. They have a formal structure. They have formal structures. This is traitor talk. No designated followership. Every person speaks or acts on his own follower according to the individual selections from a code or thought, speech, and action. No thought, speech, and or action that is dictated by one person and a specifically de special designated group of persons. In a world socio-material system dominated by racism and white supremacy, the open air method of resisting white supremacy has a basic weakness. It is initially difficult to communicate the idea of counter-racist code to all the victims of racism, not many people, in a manner that effectively motivates all or most of them think, speak, and act according to the suggestion of the code. It is true that most of the time, most non-white people are self-motivated to take effective action against racism only out of the immediate desperation. This is, only, this is one of the major weaknesses of the open-air method of resisting racism and white supremacy. The basic difference between the four-wall method of resisting racism and open-air method are as follows. The four-wall method generally is characterized by two or more persons attending regular meetings at the same time and at the same place according to a mutual agreement they have made with each other. The open-air method is generally characterized by one or more persons thinking, saying, or doing special things, uh, specific things at all times in different places according to the individual decision to use a specific code of thought, uh, speech, and action, each person makes an agreement with a code, not a person. Okay? Note, the United, the United Independent Representatory Code System concept is an open-air method of resisting white supremacy, of uh, resisting racism. That's all I want to say on this book. You can tell already this is some nonsense. He's it's an open air method is not going to build you any nations. An open air method is going to make you a sitting duck. An open air method is not effective against uh, a nation, a whole nation. You want to act as an individual on a code that you don't even have to subscribe to. That is ridiculous. That is tactically error and and a non strategic. Any black person looking at this book, if you can seriously find, no, 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 just no, this is ridiculous, okay, this is ridiculous, I don't know why anybody would, would subscribe to this, I don't know why anybody would think that this is a decent thing to read, it is not, anyway, I'm going to head out, alright, heading out. But uh, thank you so much for listening. I, 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 nah, no, not into it. But uh, thanks so much, Shemim Hotep. Oh, let me let me actually plug my book because that's what I do. Uh, so if you want a book that a black nationalist can read with a serious face, right here you go. Let me let me show you this. This is what you can read with a serious face. This is the Book of Power. My only time say Kumai. This is this is about organizing the four wall method, but like serious four wall method where we can establish nations in Africa. Empire par excellence. That's the goal. That's the objective. Let's get to it. You know, let's stop making let's stop being nonsensical and, and let's uh and let's 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 be about that work. So I'm gonna tell you Shamiam Hotep, Anki Jasadev Neb. I'm in my Aunt Dua Necha. 
I do want to also say, if you're listening to the Pro Black Perspective on KWAZ Radio, make sure you check out the other programs on KWAZ Radio. Uh, but but outside of that, uh, thank you. It's only time to say Kumat, author of the Book of Power. I got a whole bunch of, uh, I got books coming out. I got books already out. So check them out. And uh, But yeah, this stuff right here, you hear somebody talking about Nelly Fuller Jr., just, just dismiss them. But Shemiam Hotep. They tell you to.